Hey, what's up guys? My name is the channel. Welcome to episode 20 of game programming. So yesterday we took a look at, uh, well, actually our game didn't really change yesterday, but you know, we still had the same result, but what we did do is actually create this awesome, awesome sprite sheet class, which will actually load a sprite sheet into our, um, into our project, into our, into our memory and cache cache that so that we can actually access the sprites within that sprite sheet. So we've, we've actually, we, we've got a way to actually load and again, you know, cache that sprite sheet into this pixel array. But how do we actually access individual sprites? Now we haven't actually talked about that yet. So that's what, that's sort of what we're going to cover today. Um, I'm going to cover like this bit by bit, you know, just like a little bit every day so that you guys can follow along. Um, get get to know the way that this works really well. And, uh, you know, I don't really want to rush this. I want to make sure that you guys understand everything. So um, today we're actually going to cover simply loading a single sprite. Okay. So what we need to do right now is actually create a sprite class. So we've got a sprite sheet class. And again, that loads our sheet, but it doesn't load individual sprites. We want to be able to load individual sprites. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, in the graphics package here, I'm just going to right click, hit new and then class. So I'm going to create a new class. I want to call it sprite. Okay. I have finish. And what I want to do here is find a few variables. First of all, we need a size for the sprite. So again, same thing as we did in sprite shape. We got, we have this size here. We'll basically do the exact same thing here. We'll go private final int size. All right. And we, we won't declare it yet. Now again, final means it can only be declared once. Now it doesn't matter if you declare it here, for example, or if you declare it somewhere else, it can only be declared once and that's it. It's final. It's a constant. It's not a variable. Um, we'll also make two whoops private two private integers called x and y, and I'll, and I'll explain what that's for in a minute. And a public. Make sure this is public. A public int. Uh, actually, no, I don't think we need a public. We'll, we'll we'll keep it public for now. But a public int, and okay, again, an array of integers called pixels, and we won't set that just yet either. So now that we've got this, um, this is like the basis. Um, we actually need one more variable, which I'll talk about in a minute, but I just want to cover this real quick. The size is going to be the size of the particular sprite. Now, the reason I haven't defined it straight away here is because even though our sprite size is sort of agreed to be 16 right now, we might want to have sprites that are actually 32 by 32. So in other words, maybe some monsters or something in the game will actually be larger than tiles. So they'll take up like two, two times two tiles instead of one by one tile. So because obviously that monster or that creature or whatever will still be a sprite, we sort of want to, we don't want to really use two classes for that or whatever. We, 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 don't, we, don't, we really don't want redundancy here. We want to be able to just have one universal sprite class, which we can actually adjust to suit every sprite in the game. Now, the other thing is we sort of enabled ourselves again here by, by specifying a variable path and to have multiple instances of the sprite sheet class, we actually allowed ourselves to have multiple sprite sheets. So because because the sprites will be across several sprite sheets, we also need to define which sprite sheet the sprite is actually inside of. And we do that simply by going private sprite sheet, sheet, we'll just call it sheet. All right, and we'll define all this in a minute. Now, the most important part of the sprite class is the constructor. So we'll type public sprite. Now this is gonna take a few parameters. First of all, the size of that particular sprite that we're defining. So we need to set the size. Remember, we've created this variable, we haven't set it to anything yet. When we actually create a new sprite object, we need to set a size to it. We also need to set X and Y, which I'll talk about in a minute. And we also need to set which sheet it is actually inside of. So which, which sprite sheet contains our sprite. Um, so first of all, we've got this error and that's the, re the reason we've got this error is because we haven't actually set size equal to anything. So if we say, you know, length fill size may not have been initialized. So first thing we need to do is actually set the size. So we'll go ahead and set the size equal to size and that error should go away. Um, and what, what is this doing here? Get out. Is this being legit? There we go. <laughs> um, so we've set the size equal to whatever we put in our parameters here. Um, the other thing we need to do is actually set the X and Y. Now, how, do, how is this going to work? First of all, um, it's going to be pretty simple, actually. Now, yesterday, you, you might remember, we actually had a grid. And each, each grid, each like cell in that grid is a different sprite. So what happens is X and Y is actually going to be the coordinates of our sprite. Now, because the size of our sprite is 16, and in other words, I'll probably keep it like that. 
But again, we don't want to be too redundant, so I'll probably use this size. Um, because the size is 16, we need to set this dot x equal to x times size. All right, so a quick note about this, because this might be a bit difficult to understand. So again, we are setting the, this sprite instance's x value, x coordinate of where it's located on that sprite sheet. Um, when we actually call it, we want to be like, all right, it's the fifth sprite across and the second sprite down, for example, right? So the coordinates would be 5, 2. Obviously in pixels, that would be 5 times 16 for the x coordinate and the y coordinate would be 2 times 16 because we're trying to find 5 times 2, or, sorry, 5 by 2. That's where it's located. Um, this will be a lot easier to understand when I, when I actually demonstrate it in a future episode. But um, basically what this is doing is actually setting the location of our target sprite in our sprite sheet. And again, we're just gonna do the same thing for Y. Um, next up, we need to, again, load this sheet into here. So we'll call this dot sheet equals sheet. And finally, we actually need to load that sprite. And we'll do that by creating a new method, private method, private void load. And again, this is gonna be the same thing as this. Over here, we loaded that image in and we actually uh, set the pixel array to be that. Here, we're gonna do a similar, th similar thing. But we've, we've already loaded the sprite sheet image. So all we need to do here is actually access this sprite sheet's pixels and find the right sprite. So for that, we need, we need two for loops or nested for loop, um, two for loops. And one of them is gonna be y, right? So for int y equals zero, y is less than the size of our sprites. Uh, actually, this will be the, this one. Um, and y plus plus, right? And then the same thing for x. So x equals zero, x is less than size, x plus plus. So this will, this will go, go through all of our pixels in our sprites. Now, what we need to do here is type pixels, x plus y times size, equals sheet dot pixels, so our sprite sheet's pixels. Now, and this is actually gonna target where it's gonna be. So first of all, actually we forgot one thing, sorry about that, but pixels, we haven't actually set pixels equal to anything. So once we have our size, we can basically go ahead and say that pixels equals new int size times size. All right? And again, we could use this size, we could use that size, it doesn't really matter. So this is creating, a, pix uh, this is creating a, a new pixel array that's actually the size of our sprite. Um, so essentially what that is, is because remember, our pixel size, uh, sorry, our sprite size roughly now is about 16. We've sort of agreed to keep our sprite 16. The reason I'm just actually not defining it as 16 is because we could change that in the future, or we could have sprites that are multiple sizes, which is why I don't want to really keep it redundant as, as I said earlier. But what we do want to do here is actually set that pixel array to be whatever number of pixels our sprite contains. So in other words, if we have a sprite that is 16 by 16, it contains 16 times 16 pixels, right? And we've done this before. We've done, we've done it in the screen class for, um, for the map size and the screen size as well and to contain every pixel in our, in our actual screen. So over here, we've defined this pixels to be the size of our sprite. So what we need to do now is actually cycle through each one of those pixels and set them equal to the appropriate uh, sprite in our sprite sheet. So what we're gonna do here is actually navigate to start off at that, at that actual point in, in, the, in the sprite sheet um, image. So we need to type, uh, sorry, x plus this dot x, because again, this dot x, again, is gonna equal the appropriate horizontal coordinate uh, plus y plus this dot y, and then times the actual size of the sprite sheet. So sheet dot size, I believe. Sheet dot size. Have we made it private or something? Uh, let's go back to sprite sheet. Yeah, we did make it private. So let's make it public. And let's go over here and pop it like that. Whoops. All right. So again, I'm gonna go over this code right now so that you guys understand it. What this is doing, basically an overview of what this is doing is it's setting, it's basically extracting 
a single sprite out of our sprite sheet. And it's doing that by setting this sprite's pixels, all the pixels contained in this singular, in this singular sprite, is setting them, and this is again scanning through every pixel in that pixel uh, object, in that pixel image, it's setting them equal to a specific pixel in the sprite sheet. So it's doing that by again accessing every single pixel, it's accessing the actual sprite, it's, ac it's accessing the entire sprite sheet, and then out of that it's extracting the appropriate pixel, the, sorry, the appropriate sprite. And it's doing that again by going by finding the x coordinate, which is just simply this. We, we should probably should have done this dot x plus x again. It doesn't actually matter. It's, it might be easier to read. We're going to the appropriate coordinate. So we're going. This is probably a lot easier to understand if I actually show you guys uh, an example of it. Um, I, I didn't really want to though because uh, we'll be we'll be looking at you know demonstrating this earlier uh, later when we actually go to our game, but. If we if we go to the x coordinate, so say we want to load, um, I don't know, we've got we've got a sprite in this cell and we want to load it. What we need to do is actually go this dot x. So we're gonna this dot x is gonna be like two. Let's just say we input two into here. It's gonna go two times sixteen, so it's gonna go all the way. That's sixteen. That's one. That's two. It's gonna go all the way over here, right? And it's gonna start at this. Uh, let me just select a different color. Where are the colors? Window colors. Um, it's going to start right over here, all right? It's found that x coordinate. Now it's going to go over here and do the same thing as you can see this dot y plus y. So it's going to go down all, all the way here and it's going to find this coordinate. And from here, because it's going to keep, keep setting those pixels as long as the y is less than size, it's actually going to scan all the way down here and all the way over here, thus encapsulating this entire sprite and setting it equal to pixels. And that's how that works. So I hope you understood that. It'll be much easier, I promise you, when we actually get onto demonstrating this and, and actually applying this into our game. But yeah, that's, that's the end of this episode, guys. Tomorrow we'll probably take a look at actually creating individual sprites and loading them and seeing how they work. But until then, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button and I'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new episode. Later, guys. Mm -hmm.